Hey guys, Major Dodo here with part 6 of our Dodo's Guide to the Kingdoms of Death, Pinups of Death Box 1. And this will be the Pinup Survivor. So, as always, I have not assembled this miniature before. I've had a look at the sprue to get an idea of how everything's going to go together. Although with this one, it's going to be a little bit interesting. There are a couple of options to note out. The Lantern... Um, does not have to be attached if you don't want it. However, there is a bit at the end of the spear, so you could either clip that off if you don't want a lantern, but it is meant to have the lantern at the end. Um, same for the knife. That is optional, although there is a spot for that to go. So we're going to be doing the full setup. Then the, the, the main really kind of real option is that you can have two different head options, one with long hair and one with short hair. And it looks like kind of pigtails as well. I'm going to be going with the long hair variant, I think. Some nice uh, details on what I think are the... Ooh, what are they? Are they the knee pads or are they the thigh pads? It'll be interesting to find out. You'll find out with me as I um, work through this. So... Normally I have a completed version, I look up the picture and stick it up on the monitor, but I've forgotten to do that this time, so we're going to wing it for that little bit of extra entertainment value, and figure out where everything goes. So first off, as always, we start off by clipping everything out. The spear has, been gotten, a, has gotten a little bit bent, but that should straighten out its plastic. Um, knife. We will assemble both heads, uh, as always, I just have the options sitting there, and that way if I ever want to use them for one of the survivors later on, I can swap it in, because a few of the kits do give you optional heads and things like that. So, and we have detachable breasts again, because Kingdom Death, I guess. Uh, where did that go? Ooh, that was a close one. Last thing I want to do is have to stop everything and go hunting on the floor. Alright, now we're going to clip it like that. Now, last few pieces. Alrighty. That's everything off the sprue, we'll stick that aside. I um, often use, it's usually a good idea to keep even just one of these sprues around on your desk, just as a general tool thing. I'll often use them to stick miniatures to while I'm working on them, and then you know, use cheap super glue that doesn't have a particularly strong bond, and then that way you can use, you can mount miniatures on them while you're working on them, and then just snap them off. But, so don't always throw these away, it's always helpful to keep one or two around. Alright, so we're going to start off with um, cleaning and dry fitting. So the first obvious matchup is the legs, which we will clean and dry fit. Now, as always, we're on the hunt for mold lines. And we have this one is at the back. So as always, we're just going to do a gentle scrape on both sides, smooth it out, and keep looking. Always often tilt the miniature, like the piece, as the light will catch on the lines and different sides, because it's usually, mold lines are caused by the fact that the two-part molds that are generally used don't go together perfectly. There's always going to be that little tiny bit of a gap. And then what also happens sometimes is a mold slip where the um, the two pieces of the mold move. And that means that the two halves are now crooked and that's when you get that lip because everything's not meeting up neatly anymore. Um, so generally there's only a small gap but if there's been a slip in production and sometimes it's usually, it's very minor but 
Even a minor one really shows up on a miniature. The worst ones I tend to see it for are promo miniatures from companies because they're generally kind of rushed. They haven't put as much effort into quality control and testing of everything because it's only for a small run. Which is kind of disappointing because I feel that there should never, especially um, with you know, boutique miniatures and things like that, there's no excuse to not have the same quality. I'm I'm kind of of the opinion that even if it's a small run, you should always put the same effort in. But then again, I don't run a miniature company yet. Maybe I'll have to start one one day. We're going to have Dodo's miniatures. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to carefully get that. Um, oops. Send pieces flying. Um, Alright, that's cleaned up. Double check the leg. And we'll check the other leg just in case they meet up or something like that, but they don't. That's definitely going to need some cleaning. So we'll do it. Do both legs at once. So we are almost to the end of this series. I don't know what the next assembly ones will be. The monk I have sitting here, and it's partially assembled, but I'm thinking um, we might do a bard soon. Let me know if there's a miniature you'd particularly like to see. And I can see about finding one. We do have a, a black knight coming as well, which will be uh, interesting to do. I'd like to have, you know, one day I'd like to have everything, but obviously that's not very feasible. My hope, though, is if we can get as many as we can, we'll make life that much easier. Because I find that even when you do have picture instructions, which obviously we don't, I'm going to move the slide over a bit, um, they can still be not as useful as watching an actual video. So we're going to apply, we've got the Tamiya Extra Thin that I normally, normally use. I'm going to put a small amount on here. And on this side, so you can see the two smooth sections. Place that down, and then we're going to also apply it to the join here. This is just to activate the plastic and begin the um, melting process. As uh, I have mentioned before, and I will, of course, say it again. That is how plastic cement works. It bonds the, the uh, plastics together by melting them. All right, so we can already see there's going to be a small line, um, which we'll bring the camera in and show you the butt. Uh, so that will get filled in with the good green stuff later. You could put more glue on and have a bit of a seep around, which would seal that, but I find that is a bit messy. So it's it's kind of a, it's quicker, but I do find that often it comes out a little bit messier because the glue will melt things. It's kind of better to just build it up with the, the good green stuff later. So we'll dry fit this leg as well. So the leg pose on this isn't too bad. They are quite close together, but I definitely don't want to leave them separate for painting just because I feel that I'm going to have to do a bit of work on this join to make sure it all meets smoothly. So we're going to do the same as the other leg. I'm just going to apply the glue to both sides. Not being too generous, but not being too stingy. And then we're just going to meet it up. Like so. Drop it a few times because you fumble with your fingers a bit. Alright, so again, we'll bring it up to the camera so we can show you how it sits. 
So her feet do sit pretty close together. As always, the poses do tend to be a bit weird. Um, I've complained about that enough times though, about how they they always seem to be posed really weirdly. Oh, there we go. So that's the join going around there. From just, you get like a little slice of thigh. Um, there we go. Alrighty, so now that that's done, we're going to attach the breasts. So as always, carefully using our brush applicator. Start the bonding process there. Now, I got a bit ahead of herself, didn't I? Luckily, that's the only part that we needed to worry about. So, in this case, we're going to try and get a solid grip on it. Sometimes I kind of feel like getting like little sticky finger, like almost like thimbles, just to grip things with when doing this hobby. So I can stop dropping things as much. So I'm actually going to put a bit more glue in there. As I mentioned before, the um, the seeping trick, normally I wouldn't do it, but this just looks like it's going to be a fairly decent gap otherwise. So I'm going to... Uh, that's too much glue. We don't want that much quite. As I said, small pieces, nightmare to work with. There we go, that's a bit better. It's still going to be a join at the top of the breasts. Bit of a gap there at the top of the breasts, but otherwise not too bad and we can fill that in when we go to paint her which of course we will be doing those videos are going to be somewhat slower to do since normally a KDM pinup averages me about four hours to do I think four or five depending on the level of detail and whether I've painted her before I know my second Percival went a lot faster and that just is generally what happens if I have painted a miniature before I'm a lot quicker because I, I know my way around the miniature. I kind of know the color schemes I'm going to use and the techniques I'm going to use. So there's less discovery and it's just a quick um, go through. But just looking more so the cut marks from the sprues, which is cleaning up here, which are on the chin. So you do want to be very careful. Don't want to damage up those pretty faces or um, shave too much off the chin. Doing a long piece of hair where the join is at the top of the hair. I hate when designers place the joins on top of texture in the hair. Why not put it inside the hair? Instead they've... It's a pet hate of mine. It's one I've voiced many times. I'd probably be like the worst miniature designer like, no, who cares if it's not quite your know, optimal? Alright, so. None of these heads meet up perfectly. There is supposed to be a hat, isn't there? Oh, that's what those are for. Okay, now I've figured it out. So these faces are actually her hats. These little face pieces. Go on. I'll bring her into the camera so you can see. So I was a bit confused about what those were for, but it looks like those are a headdress. So those are going to bring the two parts of the head together. So let's see which ones it was. Was it this pair? Was it this pair?
See which one has the least gap, basically. It's a very fiddly piece. Oh no, okay. So it's definitely that one goes together. So we'll glue it together now. I'll just check whether I got the mold lines off this. And we're going to go the white one because we want to see all those gaps. I'm just going to quick dab of glue. That brings the, the face and the hair together. And then there is a slot on the top, which we will put Actually, we won't get ahead of ourselves this time. We'll double check, and clean off the ends of the headdress. But yeah, that was what was confusing me because they kind of resembled what you were like thigh pieces or um, shoulder pads, but uh, the shoulder pads are a much different detailed piece. They're, they've got fur on them. So they're easy to tell. All right, so now we're going to use the extra thin. We're going to just put a little bit in the top of the head in that gap. Like so. And then we're going to fit it. Now, when I look at the picture, it seems like it goes like this. So, oh. Teeth to the front. Like so. So each head will be three pieces like this, the long hair. So this one, you'll see the face. I'll bring it up, sorry. And this is the other face, so that you know which one goes with which head. Uh, there we go. So you can see we have the two different faces. They are unique match. They are specific matches, though. So this one does not go with this hair. So just be aware. But here, we have, so we have face, hair, and the little bonnet. The bonnet, which goes teeth to the face. So we will also glue this one together using the same exact same thing we did with the last one. That way, these can set properly before we start fiddling around trying to mount them on the body. Although with the longer hair, depending on how smooth that join's going to be when I dry fit it, um, will depend on whether or not I want to um, leave the head off for painting. Now, I haven't put extra glue in that join because we had... So here's something I need to check. So the bonnet, something to be aware of, which I've just discovered. The bonnets as well, oops, wrong way around, are specific to the heads. They have different pegs underneath, I've just realized. So this one, oh, my apologies, it's out of focus. Just had a panic. So, the, the two bonnets, one has a narrow peg, and the other one has a much thicker uh, semicircle half. The semicircle half goes with the short hair, the narrow slot head goes with the long hair, which I've just discovered as it wouldn't fit. So, be aware when you're doing your own, that is something to watch out for. I um, The cursory glance I gave them. It looks much the same, but obviously it's not the case. So now we're going to attach that together. So that's that problem fixed. Luckily, plastic glue does take a little bit to set properly. Alrighty, so we are now left with. Oh, where did that go? I really should get a little tray for when I do these. I think I've got one but that's full of random other bits at the moment. So I might have to get one for when we're actually doing the stream and for uh, doing the videos. So I'm just going to clean up these pockets or these pouches. 
now you can if you look carefully at them the wider end goes to the top as that's the flaps I'm pretty much sure they go here yeah so these the pockets go on the right thigh and they fill the gap where her belt stops and they cover this join here so we're going to apply the extra thin plastic glue to this area and we're going to put a little bit on the pockets as well being very careful um, with all of so we're going to be super careful when we apply this because we don't want the pocket smearing glue on her skin otherwise you're going to be stuck trying to paint it up as uh, a more textured material like leather which could be easily done but is not preferable. We get pinups because they're naked, semi-naked. We don't we don't get them to paint pants on. <laughs> um, all right, so that is applied like so. It meets the two joints together. Let me sorry, I'm just making sure we're in focus still. Um, so now have to work out how this is going to go together there are fingers uh, okay so there are fingers and a hand on the spear so she is wielding this two-handed so this is going to be a little bit annoying so I'm probably definitely not going to want to um, leave this spear off for sub assembly just because we're going to have to make sure this all lines up when we stick it together with a model so I'm going to carefully clean off the extra bits um, now there is a quite a bit here but i'm not sure whether this is um, so we're just going to sort out the arm assembly now dry fitting as always as i said dry fit dry fit dry fit especially when it's a piece like this where it looks like a couple of the pieces are going to have to match together um, and it's, it's mistakes I've made in the past. When you rush, you make mistakes. Um, I know with the flower, which when I put to her together on stream, I didn't realize that everything had to like kind of match together that her leaves, because originally I was just going to leave the leaves off and paint them. And then that's when I, but then I realized that uh, that wasn't going to work. So, how does this go? Well, that's confusing. So that arm obviously goes there. That that part's easy. We can get that part. That doesn't require a genius to work out. I'm just trying to work out how this arm is supposed to go together. So I'm just going to clean off the end of this. And there's a small mold line going down its side, which we're going to carefully scrape off now. Um, So it doesn't seem like this um, really matches here properly, but that's the only place it could go. Be like that. Oh, no, wait. If we do it like... Sorry, this might be a little bit awkward to see. It's a bit fiddly, but I'm thinking it sits on like this. Is she holding it in front of her or behind her? It looks like she's holding it behind her. She is. She's holding the lantern behind her. I always pictured this miniature holding the lantern. For some reason in my head, I always pictured this as um going behind, but apparently I was wrong. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, and it's going to be fiddly. Not my two favourite words when working with Kingdom Death Miniature, but we will soldier on. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to procrastinate on doing that. 
for a couple of pieces together because that's plus when it's something fiddly like that you generally want that to be the last thing so that you can just put it aside and not touch it you don't want to you want to kind of get it perfectly balanced and then just leave it and let it dry the lantern though looks like will be the absolute last because we'll need to attach that to the spear after the spear is secure also looks like this little peg of plastic does need to come off because that's going to be where the end of this arm goes so I'm going to go back to my clippers and I'm just going to carefully snip that off. So, now this arm, so we'll put the, actually we'll put the knife on next, so the knife Double check. I'm pretty sure that I cleaned that though. So it goes. Uh, it's not as clean as it could be. Just quickly get the pommel a bit. Yep. Now it uh, matches up with this bit, I believe. Well, I did believe. Looks like it's quite a tight fit though, I'm just carefully. Looks like it just kind of sits there. It doesn't quite go in smooth. It's more like a little overlap. So I'm going to get some of the extra thin and place it in the groove, make sure that's nice and moist. And we're going to attach the sword, or the, uh, it's a kukri really, isn't it? Or a machete. Press that on, and that will sit on the side like that. There's the matching peg that goes there, but as I said, it looks like it doesn't go in all the way. It just kind of sits there, but it covers most of it. You just want to leave that. Um, what else do we want to do before we do that? We'll clean up the shoulder pads while we give that a chance to dry. We will also be starting the painting series. Now, I don't know... The f Obviously, part one was The Great Game Hunter. I don't know if I want to make the part one of the painting guide The Great H Game Hunter or whether I want to ease myself in with something else. I'm thinking, no, part one was the, oh, now I'm drawing a blank. No, part one was the Great Game Hunter, part two was the Preacher. All right, so these pads are asymmetrical for the shoulder pads. We want to work out which way forward they have to go. Well, that one, one okay, so they're not matching, which means it's going to be a specific set, because that's even more fun. But they have to go on after the arm, so the arm is going to be the next thing to attach. Which will be this corner per corner side here. So we're going to apply the extra thin a little bit more generously this time. And we're going to Join on these breasts wasn't the best, I have to say. So it's going to hold like that. Now, where's the other shoulder pad? So one of the shoulder pads has a peg in it. And that matches up with a slot. So you can see here, one shoulder pad. This is the one that's kind of curved in on itself more. That matches up with a slot on her right shoulder. So that's from the model's perspective, like so. So we can go ahead and glue that on now as well. We want to dry fit first, of course, as I always say, dry fit, dry fit, dry fit, dry fit. Cool.
then the other shoulder will cover this arm, but it doesn't quite sit. It just kind of sits there. There's not a specific peg or anything to mount it on, but that's fine. It's not quite as smooth at here as I want it, so... That's both shoulders done. Now we need to get this arm. And we're going to get ready for the tricky part. I am tempted to actually leave... Uh, well, the temptation is to glue her to the base first, but that would mean that I just completely not touch the model for a little bit. Which is not what I want to do. I want to get this done in one video for you guys including the assembly on the... Okay, so that... Now, before that dries completely, we want to match up the fingers. And the arm. So I'm going to hold the tip of the spear, I think is going to be my best bet. So I'm just trying to make sure that, uh, so this is super super fiddly like why not just have the hand separate for both of them why have to why do you have to just have fingers but that looks like that's going to meet up so that's that's fine we can leave that for the second now obviously the head needs to go on as well and if the head goes on How do we sit this? Where does the this the check to make sure whether we want to do whether the head can go on before or after the spear? This brings back to as I said, always dry fit. So I'm going to try and get it to sit kind of how it's going to sit. I think the spear is going to have to go on afterwards, but it's just really frustrating because there's going to be an awkward model to work with now. By the time you put the hair on, the temptation is actually to just, say, bugger it and put the short hair on, just because that's going to be much easier to work around. And the box art does have the short hair, I think. No, it has mid-length hair. Uh, by box art, I mean the art card, of course. I don't know which head I like better though. I did kind of want to do more with the long hair, but if the long hair is going to make it this much of a pain to work with the spear, I think we're going to be better off going with the short hair. And then we can just attach that now. I think that's what I'm going to do. We're going to go with the short head for a change. I was, yeah, I, I was pretty sure I was going to want to go with the long hair, but the long hair is going to make it very awkward to work with this miniature to get around um, the spear and attach it and everything. So we're going to go with a short hair. Like so. That attaches on. What pieces do we have left? We have the lantern and we have the spear, all that's left. Now the spear... Just working out how we're going to do this, because the fingers are so fine, like, let me carefully place that down. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So on the spear, we have fingers at the top and the hand. Now the fingers match with the right arm 
and the hand matches down the bottom like so. It's a very awkward kind of match up because you're going to be want to super careful, going to want to be super careful with that glue because you don't want to melt and you know merge all her fingers together or some like freakish thing like that. So we're going to want to be super careful, but we are also going to. It does mean we do want to get them attached first. So the first thing I'm going to do. It's too much. We're going to put a little bit of plastic glue on that hand. And we're going to get some on the bottom arm. And I'm going to apply a little bit. I'm not going to apply it to the fingers. But I'm going to apply it to that piece. And now it's time for the fiddly bit. We're going to be one careful because you don't want to smear glue on your model. Now remember, small gaps aren't the end of the world. If you can't get the fingers and everything to match up perfectly, get them as close as you can and we'll... F oh. This is, my apologies, this is super fiddly. Because we want this hand... I um, think I'm going to make new fingers uh, to match up because it's not quite sitting as tight as I would like to that top piece when compared to the bottom piece. But if I press it in, it's still it gets pretty close. There's a small gap we're going to want to fix up on both sides, but. That's what I mean. My apologies, that was probably out of focus, but I just wanted to make sure you guys can see now what I mean. So those fingers match up to this hand, and the arm here matches up to there. So if you have a very small gap on the bottom part to get these fingers matching up better, it's going to be easier to patch up this than it is to patch up individual fingers. Though there is a small amount of work that I'm going to have to do to fix that up. Which is a very... that last piece, that spear, is going to be there. The kind of the fiddliest part of the model so far. Um, and then last, we have this lantern which looks like it just kind of matches up with this piece here. I'm going to say like that. Uh, my apologies, you can't see that. Let me try again. Oh. Let's try it like oh sorry I've just bumped the head you know what I was talking about being careful not bumping things bam all right so it's just kind of it, there is kind of a match gap there they go together but I'm gonna leave that off until this back and the head and everything is dry so you really don't want to go fiddling around too much if you can get away with it while things are still reasonably wet. So, I'm going to put her face down. We're going to quickly get our two-part base. Separate it off. Now we're going to get our white epoxy. Apply it to the bottoms of her feet. Carefully position the miniature in the center of the base, like so. This one tends to have pretty reasonable footing. I'll fix the focus though. Like so. So there we have it. There is the, we'll bring the camera in a bit more. 
So we have the pinup survivor. As I said, the lantern matches up with the chain on the back, but we're going to leave that off until she's fully dry and uh, make that a little bit easier to work with. And you, of course, have the alternate head. I went with the short hair just because it's going to be that much easier to work with as the long hair goes all the way down past here and between the spear and the back and closes off a lot more of that area. And, yeah, I think the, I think the short hair is nice. You'll get a better look at her back and such. All right, thank you for watching. And join us next time for part seven, where we'll be doing the pinup survivor. Part eight will be the final piece, and that'll be the pinup for Senka. That looks like it has the most amount of extraneous little fiddly bits, which is why I've left it till last. But thank you. I will see you next time. Thank you for all your support. Make sure to click subscribe if you're new to the YouTube channel and check out the Patreon, Facebook and Twitch links that will be in the description. Thank you for watching. I'm Major Dodo and I will see you next time.